All right. Good evening. Good evening. So excited to have you on as you're joining us. Please remember to share. Please remember to share. Please remember to share. So glad to have you on. Please share. So glad to have you on on this 27th day of December. We're winding down 2018 and we're going to be jumping right into 2019 in just a few. All right. All right. We're going to be praying in just a moment. It's 829. So give us one more minute and we'll be ready to get started. Please take this time to share, get your notebooks, get your pens, get your Bibles, um, position yourself so you can take notes, and let's get ready to see what God has to say to us tonight as it relates to dealing with demons, dealing with demons. So excited this is your first time, just wave your hand, let us know, let us know you're in the house. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you and celebrate you today. We praise you and give you all honor and glory because you're truly an amazing God. You're all powerful, all knowing, ever present, always in control, never caught off guard. And God, you're so serious about our assignment, what you want us to do. You know, you created us, you gave us life, you gave us purpose. And you're deliberate in making sure we do what you set us out to do. So God, give us wisdom. And our wisdom today circles around demons. So God, give us wisdom to encounter and conquer the demons that show up in our lives. We love you and praise you. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank you for being on. Thank you for being on. And we're going to go ahead and get started. I am Napoleon Bradford. And I am the lead shepherd of the Life Center, a cyber community of Christ followers. And we have been engaging in some fundamental lessons beginning in October with identity. Who am I in the eyes of God? And then expectation, the month of November, um, why I am who I am. And then this month, December, we've been dealing with assignment, what God wants me to do. If you've missed any of those, you can jump on our YouTube channel and you can watch them just like you watched Bird Box all weekend and just like you were um, um, streaming and Netflix and, and you can Netflix and chill and watch the Life Center channel. Man, that's some Netflix and chill right there. All right. So um, we're continuing in this series and, and, and God is so amazing because this weekend a lot of people have been uh, reaching out to me who were under attack. And so God led me to, come to, to do the next to the last session in this series called Assignment on Dealing with Demons. What, what, what does God want me to do as it relates to dealing with demons? And, and so in order to, to really preface that, we're going to read a long passage of scripture. So just go ahead and bear with me. If you have your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Um, just go ahead and, and, and bear with me. We're going to read it. We're going to read it together. Beginning Mark chapter five. All right. Um, so let's read it. It says, then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken into pieces, neither could tame him. And always night and day, he was in the mountains and the tombs crying out and cutting himself with stones. 
When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshiped him. And he cried out in a loud voice and said, what, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to, for he said to him, come out of the man unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what's your name? He answered him saying, my name is Legion for we are many. And he also begged him earnestly that he would not send him out of the country. Now, a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountain. So all the demons begged him saying, send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission that the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. There were about 2000 and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled and told the city and in the country, and they went out to see what had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon possessed and about the swine. And they began to plead with him to depart their region. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might be with him. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he had compassion for you. And he departed and began to proclaim it in Decapolis, all that Jesus had done for him and all marveled and all marveled. So, so today we just want to simply deal with this thought, dealing with demons, dealing with demons. So, so the question we're going to wrestle with is what do you need to know when dealing with demons? How many of you can honestly say you've been under demonic attack? How many of you can say you understand demons? You understand demonic attack. You understand when things are coming against you, when people are coming against you, when everyone seems to be coming against you, and you know it's a trick or plot of the enemy. Listen, don't be afraid of demons. But, but, but we need to know how to deal with them, all right? So, so here's the first thing. First thing, you need to know the difference. You need to know the difference between a demon and a demoniac. You need to know the difference between a demon and a demoniac. Know the difference. So a demon is a spirit. A demon is a spirit. A demoniac is a person possessed by a spirit, all right? Know the difference between a demon, somebody put that up, know the difference between a demon and a demoniac. A demon is an evil spirit, but a demoniac is a person possessed by that spirit. Understand, a person is not a demon. A person, when they're impacted or affected or possessed by a demon, they are not a demon, they are a demoniac, all right? You need to know the difference. Stop calling your children demons, they're not demons. They may be possessed by a demonic spirit, but they are not demons. You need to know the difference. A demoniac is a person who is possessed, not completely controlled, but they are under the influence of a demonic spirit, the demoniac, the, 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 the influencer, that force that is influencing him or her is the demon. So this man is a demoniac because he is under possession, under the influence of a demonic spirit. There you go, that's number one, thank you. You gotta know the difference. So stop calling your children, stop calling your spouse demon, no. They may be under demonic oppression, demonic influence, but they are not demons. The demon is the spirit. The demon is not the person. That's why Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spirits. No, no, no. See, the demonic will never, the, the demon will never be a person. The demon will have influence over a person and that person under the influence becomes a demoniac, all right? Second thing, demons are always deliberate in their display. Demons are always deliberate in their display. Demons, listen to me, are always deliberate in their display. I'll prove it to you. The text says, then they came to the other side of the sea, 
to the country of the Gadarans. And when he had come out the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Okay, maybe you missed it. Let me see if I can press play and say it again. It says, they came to the other side. In other words, there was a boat full of people, Jesus and his disciples. In fact, if you read Mark, there were also little boats with them, but they came to the other side. But it wasn't until he stepped out of the boat that immediately the demon came to him. You need to understand that demons are assigned individuals. They are assigned. They're not sporadic. So if they're coming after you, if you feel like you're being, un if you're under demonic attack, that means the demon has a particular assignment for you. They, they don't just show off to everybody. They show off specifically to the person they're assigned to see. Look, they came over. So they came over, but in them coming over, the demon only showed up when he got out of the boat. Okay, watch this. Remember, the demon and the demoniac are two entities in the same person. The demon is the spirit. The demoniac is the person under the influence. Now, here's the crazy thing. The writer, who is Mark, did not understand that in his writing. So he's narrating this. Again, you have to understand that the narrator, though under the influence of the Holy Spirit, is writing through human lens. So he's writing the best way he can articulate it. And the way he articulates it is that he showed up to Jesus when Jesus stepped off the boat. Now, the he he's referring to is the spirit-possessed man, but the man is the one that approached. Okay, listen. Okay, so so, so demons are deliberate. They, they don't show up to everybody. They don't show out with everybody. They know who they're assigned to. All right, you need to understand. When demons try to impact you, Oh, God. They possess people who they know will get to you. Oh, man. Listen. Oh, God. This is good. Um, which means you may encounter a demonic spirit possessing somebody who doesn't show out like they do with you with anybody else. So when you're describing it, yes, yeah, so-and-so really showed out to me. The other people are like, wow, I've never seen that side of her. And possibly it could be be because that demon was not assigned to attack you. They're always deliberate in their display. They're, they're deliberate. Okay, here's the next thing you need to watch out. Demons manifest in moments of apparent weakness. Demons manifest in moments of apparent weakness. So, so the text says, as soon as he stepped off the boat, the demon right there showed up, says it right there. After he came out the boat, immediately there met him a man with an unclean spirit. Now, here's the crazy thing. What, 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 what had happened right prior to that? Prior to that, Jesus had been asleep in the boat. And while sleeping in the boat, a storm came. And in the midst of the storm, the disciples woke him up, wondering if they were going to perish. Jesus arose in the storm and rebuked the storm. So, so they just come out of a storm. And the first person they meet after coming out of the storm is a demon possessed man. Now, here's the argument, right? Part, part two of the argument, two parts. Um, it could be that the demon thought because of the power that was expressed through the calming of the storm after knowing the storm had come, that maybe the demon thought that Jesus was weak. Oh, man, that's the first priest presumption. But can I push it? Oh, my God. Possibly, it could be that the demoniac, the man that was possessed by the demon, watched how Jesus handled the storm and knew that this was the person that could address his issue. Okay, I know you're saying, what do you mean? Well, if you've never been to the Sea of Galilee, you wouldn't know that the Sea of the Galilee can be, all sides can be seen from any side which means no matter where I stand on the shore, I can see the other side, okay? Which means if I'm standing in the tombs on the side of the sea, I can see the storm, I can see the boats, and I could have seen Jesus rebuke the storm. Oh man, which means if I'm possessed with a demon and I see Jesus rebuke a storm, 
I think in my mind, if he rebuked the storm, he can deal with my demons. Oh, man. Listen, listen. That, that, that's why you can't be alarmed at how demons or people that are demon-possessed tend to be drawn to you. Maybe they're hoping that the same way you handle the other issues of your life, you will be able to help provide some calm in their situation. Oh, man. Listen, that got me excited. That got me excited because oftentimes we think that the man was crazy when he came. He was under possession, but look at how Mark labels him. Mark says there met him out of a tomb, a man with an unclean spirit. Look at what he doesn't say. He doesn't say a demon possessed man. He says a man that has an unclean spirit, which means maybe Mark, his narrator, saw the man before he saw the demon. Wow which means that the demon did not have such control over the man that the man couldn't think in some parts on his own. I'm going to push it in a second because I got excited about that, but I want to push this. So the demon shows up. Let's say one argument is because he might have seen the weakness of Jesus, right? He might have suspected that Jesus was weak. And maybe people try you because they think you're weak. Maybe Demons possess people who can get close to you and then try you because they think what you've just come out of has exhausted your ability to deal with them. So now they have the upper hand. Mm. But the other side of that is maybe the man who had the spirit saw Jesus deal with the storm and said, why not I come to him? Because if he could silence a storm, he can surely exercise this demon. Woo, I love it. All right, here's the next thing. Hold on, hold on. Because demons show off based on how successful they've been in the past. Watch this. Demons show off based on how successful they've been in the past. This, this caught me because remember, Mark is narrating this, right? Mark is narrating this. So Mark narrates that when Jesus gets out of the boat, there's a man that meets him out of the tomb with an unclean spirit. This is Mark narrating. And then Mark gives some background information. He says, this man has, has dwelled in the tomb. He, no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains been pulled apart, and the shackles broken to pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always at night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. Now, what you miss if you're not careful is you think this is happening right then, but it's not. Mark is justifying the behaviors of the unclean spirit. He says, this is how that demon used to show up. Oh God, this is, this is how that demon showed up. He's saying that because that's not the experience Jesus had. Okay. Let me see if I can make it plain for you. So Jesus steps off the boat. The man comes to Jesus. And then he says this. He says, and when he saw Jesus from afar off, he ran and worshiped him. Look at what's missing, right? He's not cutting himself. He's not breaking chains. He's not breaking shackles. He's not running around in the tombs. He sees Jesus and worship him, worships him. Okay. Um, the demon showed out in the way Mark described because he was successful showing out that way, um, which means he's encountered people in the past who could not help him. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, so, so demons show out based off how successful they've been with it in the past. So every other time he's tried to show out they couldn't do anything with him. What does the text say? They tried to bind him, but they couldn't. They put shackles on him. He'd break them. They put chains on him. He'd destroy him. He cut himself with stones. But this time, Jesus steps out the boat. And when Jesus steps out the boat, the man comes and falls at his feet and worships him. No acting out. No cutting. See, here's the thing. Demons know who to play with. They know. They know. And they will only push you if they think they can have you. Remember, the, 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 so Jesus says, uh, John 10, um, that the enemy comes, but to kill, steal, and destroy. It means he's approaching. In fact, 
uh, uh, Peter says, he's your enemy, the devil, um, um, is like a roaring lion seeking who he can des desire, who devour. Um, um, Job says, uh, I've been, the devil says that I've been to and fro, back and forth to earth, right? So he's attempting, he's looking for who he can conquer. But he doesn't show out with Jesus because he already knows he's not going to win. So this man comes. So, so here's the thing. Um, um, demons try you based on how successful they've been in the past, right? Okay, watch this. Which means if demons are, if the same demon is assigned to you, and they try you again, that means they've been successful in the past. Ah. So they come at you the same way they've always come at you because every time they've come at you prior to now, they've won, right? Um, this, this is gonna help you. This, this might just this bless me because this also means that they're coming for a reason. And the difference this time is that you're gonna be better equipped to handle them. And the reality is the way you're able to engage them should show them that you're not the same person you used to be. Oh, man. Um, so, so, so this demon approached Jesus, came up to Jesus, ran up on Jesus, and worshipped him. Hold on, hold on. Um, here's the next thing you need to know. Descriptors are always details of demonic possession. Descriptors. Descriptors are always details of demonic possession, descriptors. So, so all this commentary that Mark gives, don't mistake it for the man. These are descriptors of the demon, right? He, he, he's had his dwelling place upon, among the tombs. No one could bind him, not even with chains. Never been bound um, with shackles and chains, chains pulled apart, shackles broken into pieces. No one could tame him. Always night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tomb, crying out, cutting himself with stones. Those are descriptors of the demon. Don't mistake them for the descriptors of the man. Okay. Um, you, you have to be able, because if you're not careful, you will demonize man when man isn't the problem. It's the spirit that's possessing the man. The man is not the problem. The man is just under the influence of a demonic spirit. And you have to be able to differentiate so you don't begin classifying demonic possession on the person. Okay. Um, um, so, so when you're making these descriptors about how the child is behaving, remember that's the spirit. That's not the child. Stop calling the child stupid and dumb and mute and deaf and unable to learn. No, that's the, that's the spirit that is operating in the child. Okay. So, um, because oftentimes we mislabel. The spirit has influenced or possessed the person. It's not the man's trait. How do I know? Because if you keep reading when the spirit is gone, the man is clothed and sitting and in his right mind, which means that the only difference between the man Jesus met and the man that that Jesus healed is the fact the spirit is gone. You're right, Shonda. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. See, so many times we've been trying to fight the people and ascribing the description to the people that we have forgotten that it's a demonic force and that we need to take more time to remember who the person was before. Okay, um, let me push it. Mark 9, Jesus comes down the mountain and encounters a man who has a son who's possessed with a mute spirit. And this, this, this spirit is bucking in this boy as this boy is laying on the floor. And Jesus asks him a very important question. He says, how long has it had him? And the man says, since he was a child. Jesus asked him that to remind him, because then he says, he says, listen, since he was a child, it's thrown him in the water, throw him in the fire to kill him. And I think the man got so caught up in the demonic moment that he didn't think about the praise report he was given. What am I saying? He said, listen, this thing has possessed him since he was a child. Not since he was born, but since he was a child. Then he said this, oftentimes it's thrown him in the water and in the fire to kill him. But he's standing there with the boy, which means 
Whatever was attacking him did not have the power to kill him, and also it hadn't always been occurring, which means oftentimes we get so caught up in the nowness of the demonic moment that we forget that the demon hadn't always been attacking. There had been some good moments. There have been some great times, but even in those great times, now the demon is attacking, and all we can focus on is the descriptor of the demon. But I'm encouraging you to hold on to more than just the descriptor of the demon. I need you to hold on to the fact that angels, I need you to hold on to the fact that the, the child has not, or the person has not, always been acting like that. Here's the next thing. Um, the de demoniac is always hoping to be delivered. Watch this. So Jesus shows up and the text says that the man ran to Jesus, fell at his feet and worshiped him. Catch this. This is the demoniac that was just being described by demon-like descriptors in the previous verses. But this man who the writer tried to paint as crazy was not that crazy. The demon didn't have total possession because when he saw Jesus, his first inclination was to worship because he understood that worshiping Jesus leads to deliverance. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Which means, oh man, those who are under possession don't think that they want to be in that condition. Many of them are seeking to be delivered. How many of us have walked by, we walk by them that are going through thinking that they just like the condition they're in. And because we don't deal with them, because we don't deal with them, they never get the opportunity to become who God created them to be. We write them off thinking they like behaving like that. No, they're under demonic attack. And if we could separate the person from the demon, we can love on the person and let Jesus love the hell out of the demon. All right, all right. Here's the third, the next thing. De demons are always hoping to cause distraction. Watch this. So the man worships, right? The man worships and the demon cries out, what have I to do with you, Jesus? Son of the most high God, I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Oh man. So, 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 so the demon is hoping to cause distraction. Oh man, listen. So the demon is hoping to cause distraction. He, he, in the midst of the man's worship, he tries to get Jesus's attention and tells him, please don't torment me. Please don't torment me. Oh man, this is good. Because remember, the demoniac is hoping to be delivered, but in the midst of the demoniac's deliverance, the demon is trying to be a distraction. Don't allow the demonic to distract you from the opportunity to usher somebody into deliverance. Don't, don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. Don't let it happen. So, so, so this, this, this demon is trying to distract. The man is trying to be delivered. And then Jesus does this. Jesus says, Jesus says, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him his name. He, when you're dealing with a demon, here's the next thing. Don't play with him. Name him. Don't play with him. Don't, don't play with him. Name him. Um, this is very important because oftentimes we entertain the demonic behavior. Oftentimes we play with it. Remember in Acts, when, when that python spirit had that young lady, the, the men were trying to make money off of her. So they engaged the spirit. And in, the, in them engaging the spirit, they became offended when Paul and Silas cast it out. You, you can't play with demons. No, you can't entertain them. You can't even seek the pleasure that the demonic spirit could cause because if you play with it, it will be harder to cast. See, Jesus didn't play with it. He, first of all, he initially gave his intention. He said, listen, the first thing I want to do is I want you to know I'm casting you out. Secondly, I want to know your name. First, I want to cast you out. Secondly, I want to know your name. See, so he, he, he gave intention before he even sought identification. But you need to be able to know what kind of spirit you're dealing with. They're different kind, Molech, 
Abandon, um, Apollyon, um, um, Python. These are different spirits and they operate and, and, and work in different ways. But you need to know the spirit. You need to be able to identify it and call it by name so you can cast it out. You, you know what that spirit is. You, you know, you know, you need to name it and cast it. Why? You don't have time to play with it. If you entertain it, it will attack you. It will distract you and it will lead you to destruction. I just need you to understand the, these, these demonic forces are not to be played with. So you don't play with them. You name them and you cast them out. All right. Demons know when destruction is imminent. I got to rush because I'm, I'm way on too long. De demons know. So, so, so after he says, what's your name? They said legion, right? Because we are many. The text says he begged them that he would not send them out of the country. So the demon knew his time was up. And when he saw the swine, he begged them, the demons begged them, saying, oh man, oh, listen, I just saw this. Golly, I just saw this. Okay, so remember, we have the demoniac and the demon. So when Jesus asked them, what's his name? He answered saying, my name is Legion. That's the, that's the demons. For we are many. And he begged them not to send them out of the country. Okay. So the man says, don't send me out because I'm possessed. Right? Don't, don't, don't treat me like my condition. Oh, man. So the man says, don't get rid of me because I'm going through. Oh, man. That, that's good. Because too many times we deal with the demoniac instead of directly dealing with the demon. So we cast the whole person out of the church versus trying to help them in their condition. Oh my God, I love your name. So, so he said, listen, he said, listen, he said, don't cast me out. Just deal with my demon. Don't, don't, don't get rid of me. Just deal with my issue. Oh man. So when the demon knew they were about to get dealt with, they saw the swine and the text says, so all the demons begged him saying, send us to the swine. So the demon knew that their days were numbered. So rather than stay and experience annihilation at the hands of Jesus, they begged to be sent to swine. Oh man, oh man. Okay, I gotta get out of here. Um, the majority of people aren't excited when demons are dealt with. Oh. So look at what happens, right? Um, the majority of people aren't happy. So the people were watching the herd, they saw the swine go over the cliff. They went back to the town, to the country and talked about what happened. The people came out and when they saw the man that was possessed, now sitting clothed and in his right mind, they got scared and begged him to leave and begged Jesus to leave the region. Here's the reality. A whole lot of people want to talk about demons but they don't want to deal with demons. They like to laugh at the effect of demonization, but they don't want to deal with the demon. In fact, they rather just disregard the person than deal with the demon. So you, you, you aren't valuable to people if you're not possessed because possession provides them entertainment. Think about the people that were watching him in the tombs, watching him, cutting himself with the rocks, watching him, um, fight off the shackles and break up the chains. No, but now that you're saying you're of no value to my entertainment, I don't want to deal with you. Could have been a money issue. Who was paying? Who was taking bets to see if they could bind him this time? Who was casting lots to see if the next time they saw him, would he have clothes on? But now that he's healed, he provides no value. Everybody ain't happy. Listen, here's the thing. When people see crackheads, they excited. But when the people, when the person on crack gets delivered from the crack and they see him the next time, they never celebrate him. They try to always remember who he was and tell stories about who he was or treat him like he was. Oh man. Never once does the text say, look, I'm in the text. Verse 15, then they came to Jesus, saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to them and who had been demon possessed and about the swine. And they, then they began to plead with him to depart. Watch this. They never welcomed him back into society. They never 
um, welcomed him back home. Oh man, listen, I, I can talk about that because we're dealing with this, this prison reform. And the reality is there are going to be a whole lot of people coming back home. These people who've been demonized, these people who we've made money on talking about, we, 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 We've, we've called them everything but a child of God, and now they're coming home. And can I tell you, we're going to begin, I can already tell you, we're going to start criticizing the criminal justice system and never welcoming the returning citizens home. See, the reality is they're going to start coming home in January, and we need to already be trying to figure out how to have jobs for them, how, how to have places for them to stay, how to have transportation for them, how to have clothing for them instead of demonizing them because we don't like the fact that they've been healed. Oh man, I gotta go because I'm on too long. Here, here's my last thing. Um, how do you deal with the demons? You must deal with them so that the delivered can become a witness to the deliverer. You gotta deal with the demons because if, you're, if you don't deal with them, then they won't get delivered. And if they don't get delivered, they will never become a witness of the deliverer. It's right there in the text. He begged to go back with Jesus, but Jesus told him to go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done. And he departed and began to proclaim in the Decapolis. Now you gotta understand that the Decapolis was 10 cities. So Jesus delivered one man who then spread his gospel to 10 cities. Oh man, listen. And you got to get down because I'm getting excited. Um, you got to understand. Okay, maybe not. Okay, come on back up. You got to understand that when God operates and delivers one demoniac from that demon, that demoniac then becomes delivered and he can't help but tell somebody else about the God who delivered him. He becomes an evangelist. Wow. So you got to deal with the demons. You can't be afraid of the demonic. You can't be afraid to deal with the demoniacs and to help them address the demon and not demonize them. Because when you allow them to be introduced to Christ, who is the deliverer, they become proclaimers of that name. And they go from city to city, from town to town, talking about how they've been to listen. And I know we get tired of it because they always come and talk to us, but the reality is we got to celebrate them and then expose them to other people who are also in bondage because they need to know that the same Jesus that set them free, the same Jesus that exercised their demons is still able to, to de-demonize somebody else. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this day. We praise you and celebrate you because you're such an amazing God. God, it's so important that we deal with these demons. It's so important that we don't, we don't dance around with them, don't play with them, but we, we, we discover their names and we deal with them. Dealing with them simply means engaging them in such a way where they no longer become distractions, but they do get delivered. That we don't, become, don't begin to demonize people but we understand that people are just under demonic attack. So God, give us the strength and the power to always allow the you in us to stand up strong against any demonic attack. For you reminded us in your word that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and high places. So God, we celebrate you today. Give us the strength and, and change our language. God, I, I rebuke the language of calling a person a demon. I, I rebuke the, the language of calling a person a devil, but reminding us that it's just the spirit and that we, we, we leave the spirit to you and we just love the person and let you love the hell out of the demon. All right, we love you and praise you in your son Jesus' name, amen, amen. Listen, I thank you for being on. I thank you for being with us today. Um, it's been such a great season. We are one episode away from the close of this assignment series. God has been so faithful, and I can't leave without inviting you to connect. First of all, if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, and you need to connect to Christ as your deliverer, as your Savior, and as your Lord, inbox me so I can pray with you. Secondly, if you've connected with God, but you've strayed away, and you know you need to reconnect to him, 
simply inbox me so I can pray. Um, thirdly, if you want to connect to the Life Center, if you want to connect to this body, this cyber community of Christ followers, um, then simply go to our website, www.tlcsumter.org and hit connect and inbox us so we can add you to our mailing list. If you want to connect through contribution, we invite you to connect through Givelify Cash App or um, PayPal, TLC Sumter. Listen, God is doing amazing things, and I just want to give you three announcements, and we're out. First of all, our Giving Life campaign was a success. We were able to raise $240 with your assistance. We were able to buy two outfits and a heavy coat for every child, every child, every child on that list. We were able to buy a heavy coat and two outfits for all of them. Um, that was such an amazing opportunity. We used up all the money and then some to buy bags, but God is faithful. Secondly, this Sunday is the Freedom Experience at the Red Dot Hookah Lounge. Listen, God has given me a vision for a deliverance service for those who are bound, who've been taking their bindings and their bondage from year to year, trying to mask it and act like things are okay. And God has says, listen, this, this year, they don't need to go into 2019 with that baggage. So we're going to come in praying. We're going to have oil at the door. We're going to have prayer intercessors. We're going to have partner prayers. You're going to take your issue to the altar. If you have an issue, if you want to intercede for somebody else, you can. We're going to pray. God has given me a word about Jesus's plight as a deliverer. Um, that ain't the title, but you will be set free. Um, and listen one hour and 15 minutes on Sunday, and you won't leave the way you came. Not only that, but you will stay the way you leave. Oh, you won't leave the way you came, but you will stay the way you leave. Oh man, I feel it. That's freedom. That ain't just deliverance, that's freedom. That means that you won't go back to what you've been delivered from. That's Sunday at five o'clock at the Red Dot Hookah Lounge. And then on New Year's Eve, the 31st, there is a major announcement coming from the Life Center. That's all I'm going to tell you. There's a major announcement coming from the Life Center on December 31st. I'll tell you the time on Sunday, but just get ready. 2019, we're going big. Listen, I love you. I thank you for being on. Share this. Give your testimonies with it. Tell people what you thought about it. Invite them to watch it. Let's build God's kingdom together. I love you. To God be the glory.